Okay, everyone should be able to see this representation disclosure now. Is that correct? Nod, yes. Okay, good. All right, sorry about that. I don't know what the heck happened there, but I think I'm on track now. Um, so with the new rules, one of the big things is, you know, obviously the you have to have a buyer's rep to show a property, but if it's your own listing, you do not have to. If it's a brokerage listing, you don't have to. But with, where the disconnect is with that, if you, tr if it's, I'll, I'll give you two scenarios. One, you're the listing agent and someone calls and just says, I want to see your listing. I'm unrepresented. I don't want you to represent me, blah, blah, blah. They're just calling you because you're the listing agent. They want to deal directly with the listing agent. Well, that case, you can show it and you don't have to have any kind of um, buyer rep or showing service or anything like that. But you do have to do this form, the representation disclosure, because you want to make it perfectly clear to them. It's 1417 representation disclosure that you're there on behalf of the seller. They shouldn't be telling you any information about how much they can afford, what they're going to offer, and not that you can't do the deal and they be unrepresented. You just have to have the right forms. And I'll get into more detail on that, but I just wanted to go over these two scenarios. So that's perfectly fine. I wouldn't recommend in that case getting a buyer's rep or showing service. Now, you may want to if the house isn't right for them and they're like, I want to see the house down the road. Well, now that becomes a whole different situation. You know, then you would, if it's not one of our brokerage listings, you would have to get a buyer rep or a showing service uh, signed from them in order to show another home down the streets that's not within our brokerage. Now, the other circumstances, you have someone that's really a potential client of yours, a buyer client, and they want to see one of our listings. So technically, you do not have to have a buyer's rep or a, or a short form showing service signed by them because it's one of our listings. But the big caveat to that is you have to then notify them that you are there showing them as a representative of the seller. And that to me is a big disconnect because you, um, you, you're not, that's not your intent. Your intent is to be there and get them as a buyer's agent. So I don't really want you to do that. Can you do that? Yes. You would still have to do this 14, 17 disclosure because you're there on behalf of the seller. You cannot talk to them like you're their buyer's agent. And that's a big disconnect. So I would much rather you get some type of representation disclosure from them, even if it's one of our listings. I'm sorry, not representation disclosure, buyer rep. So either a short form showing service or you know full service, you want to have that. Because that's your intent is to talk to them as a buyer. So I don't like that. You know, Everyone's like, well, the rules are, you know, I can show any of my brokerage listings without having a buyer's rep, but that's a, a huge disconnect of the conversation you can have. Because if you do that, you're representing the seller. That's why you're allowed to do that is because it's one of our brokerage listings and you're representing the seller. Not a good idea. If, you're, if your intent is to get them at the buyer, you got to convince them to at least sign that short form showing service at the bare minimum. Then you can talk to them as they're your buyer client and you don't have to do this representation disclosure to say you're there representing the seller. I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to make that more clear because you know, everyone's just kind of goes with the base rules that, hey, you're allowed. That doesn't mean that's the right way to do it. So I wanted to, to make that clear. Hopefully that's clear to everyone. Anyone have a question on that at all? Does that all make sense? Or am I talking gibberish? <laughs> all right, let me... Uh... <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go over a few other new things that, um, and I got to give kudos to our broker, my broker friends in Texas, because they really, uh, it was a collaboration effort to these next things I'm going to show you. And I think they're really going to be helpful because I've done a lot of presentations like this about, hey, what's going on, you know, verbally, but I think everyone learns in different aspects, whether it's in print or verbally, or we have a question. So this is the one page. Yeah, Tony came in late, so I'll go over this. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's, <laughs> uh, Tony's asking, no, no, this isn't the, the short form page. No, that's a different form. This is the representation disclosure. If you're showing one of your own listings, you have to make it clear to that person who's unrepresented who you represent. They shouldn't be talking to you about, you know, their budget, their how much they're going to offer. And, and. Y yes. And also, though, if because you're allowed to show the brokerage listings without a buyer rep, 
But when you do that, you're showing on behalf of the seller. So even in that case, you'd have to get this. And that's where I'm saying, I don't like that. You're much better having either the short form buyer rep or the long form buyer rep signed prior to showing the house. Cause your intent is to get them as a buyer just because you can do it. doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. So I'd rather you not do that, but this is going to get used much more because there is a segment of the population out there that says, Hey, I'm, I know what I'm doing. I don't need representation. I want to just go to the listing agent. Cause I'm going to save money. You know, that mantra uh, is out money. there. That's yeah. Well, well, right. And you, you know, that, you know, just like anything, we've gone through this many times is everyone needs to represent, you know, but that, you know, everyone has their own tax on it. So it's a different way. Um, so the next thing I'm going to go over, what I did, like I said, in collaboration with other brokers here in Texas, is uh, we did a flow chart um, and put together the different things as we go through this change over and so one of the biggest changes, and hopefully you've already all done this. So this is the first one. This is, to me, is the easiest one. If you have a representation agreement, um, and that, that can cover both a buyer, an old buyer's rep, you know, dated prior to June 24th, or an old listing agreement. And that's the much more common. Normally you don't have, but you might have an old buyer's rep hanging out there. You Here's gives you the different forms that you need to do. There's a simple 2701, meets the minimum standards, basically just is a disclosure that should be already signed if you have these. Now this, and that form is going to go away because obviously a, in, in a pretty short period of time, you're not going to have any old buyer's reps or old listing agreements are all going to be new. So that 2701 is just for the conversion to be compliant with NAR. So this gives you a nice flow chart of how you become compliant. And hopefully you already have done that because that was really supposed to be done by August 17th. But if you haven't, Let's get it done, especially if you have a listing that's been on the market for a while and it's pre uh, June 24th. So, and that, and your other, you'll see there's other options there. You know, the 2701 is the simplest. The other options are just do a new listing agreement and so forth and so on. But this spells it out, I think, pretty good. I've gone over it in previous videos. Hey, I'm never against having a call. If you're, you're uncertain about something, call me and we'll go through it. But I, I'm going to be sending these out in PDFs here later today. I just finished them up really. Oh, Okay, that was interesting. Sorry, we're having a little in-office technical. I guess I left it sit too long. Okay, um, I will be just looking them over one more time, but if you see anything that doesn't look right, like always, let me know. Um, so that's the first one, the representation to make sure you're up to date on those two forms. The next one, um, just kind of sticking on the buyer aspect of it here. One of the things that we have out there right now is the discussion about you know who pays the commission right and i'm not going to get into details on that we've all talked about the buyers always brought all the money they really pay the commission but there's a lot of talk about it and different things that people are doing so one of the things that's out there is that buyers are saying to their buyer's agent hey i, I, I don't have the money to come up with the commission you know yeah i i don't want to see any houses where i have to pay your commission i want that to be part of the deal so we developed this form here for that specific reason. If you have somebody, and you see it happening a lot in like VA loans, different things like that, then there's, and I'm gonna talk about some different options, but this is just a form so that you don't get in trouble. So when you, if a buyer does come to you and say, hey, look, I, I wanna use you, you're my go-to agent, but I don't wanna pay the commission. I don't want you to show any houses where they're not offering a buyer agent commission. Then you can have them sign this and, and pick that option that, on there. And then you're covered that no one can then accuse you of steering like that you that you chose yes go ahead and show me all the properties that are not offering to pay your commission but i don't want to pay your commission we can Ooh. have that discussion later after looking at the house that doesn't really fit either one of the options right because they may still want to look at exactly it. yes this and that was my next part that I was just coming to. So she's asking like, well, what, this doesn't really cover all the avenues because you could have a house that says they're not giving commission. You could still structure the deal where that you get your commission yeah. paid. And that's really the issue that that, but this is just more of that. There is a segment of people out there that just don't want anything to do with that. They're stressed by it. They just want to see houses where they don't have to worry about your buyer commission all. Now, technically to answer your question, like they, you know, it says in there, if they've signed the agreement, it says that they're going to pay you. 
Now they may say, I'm not going to pay you, but then, then you just wouldn't make, and I think that's where we're headed probably is you're going to show everything. And then when you make the offer, you're just going to ask for your compensation. If the, if the seller won't give it, then you move on. And it's opposed to eliminating houses. So I don't really love this, but if someone wants that, I've just had agents request that. Yes, I've had agents say, this person has told me, I don't want to see any houses where the seller's not paying my compensation. Well, that's nice verbally, but now he hey, put that in writing, then that way you're covered. No one can accuse you. Uh, yeah, right. Or the seller find out, hey, you didn't show my house because there was no commission. Well, it's because I was instructed by the principal to not show that house. So it's really just to cover your butt. I don't think it'll be long-term used because I think we're going to change. And there is and I'm not going to get into it today, but there's new forms coming in November. So th this is going to change. So this is uh, for the next couple of months uh, on there. I'm going to take that one step further. Sure. And say, you have a buyer rep agreement. Your, your client, your prospect says, hey, show me that one that doesn't have permission. They go to, then you find out that they're going to offer on that same house. So that was the same thing. After they signed the buyer rep agreement, they signed all this documentation. Now what? You throw it at, you throw it at title and say, hey, I get the money well, it, it, the it, it's going to be hard to enforce. So just so you know, kind of the mantra from all the brokers is we're not going to sue anybody. Not, we're going to, we can still pursue it, but it really depends on if they were offering commission to begin with, you know, um, no right. That, that's what I'm saying. You've had a buyer agreement. I'm personally, I'm walking away. Right. right? But there are going to be some people, some agents that get, let's say I have, I'm the, I do a lot of listings. Let's say my listing decides not to do that. And then the buyer comes at me because, and I don't know who that buyer is. In other words, they prevented you from collecting. The no, no. Well, let's say I have to let, I'm going to reverse it. I'm the listing agent. No, well, let's address your first one first, though. The buyer, so the buyer, what Tony's saying, just so you, I don't know if you all can hear it, is, you have a buyer's rep agreement with somebody, you show them a house and then they, they ghost you. And then you end up finding out that they've really made an offer on that house. Are you going to sue or what do you, what's your ramifications to go after? You're really going after that buyer, not the listing agent, because you have the agreement is with them that if the seller won't pay you, they will pay you. So will we, will we write a letter? Will we try to? Yes. Well, are we going to sue anyone? No, it's not going to be worth the bad press on there. You could. Well, not against the seller though. No, but I mean, the buyer ends up buying that house. You would so sue. The process, you have a buyer agreement. Right. And you technically now turn it into a, a mechanics lien and say, hey. Yeah, you have this agreement. You uh, you bought. Yeah. But we're not going to do that, just so you know. <laughs> so we, we have to keep that connection with our buyers. That's I mean, there can be a letter, like a demand letter sent, something like that. But right now, we're probably not going to sue someone over that, you know, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm cool with that because yeah. I would rather walk away and not deal with something like that. Right. right. Because there's no amount of money that's going to make this any better, right? Now I'm a listing agent. I don't know that that buyer has a buyer rep agreement. Right. He put the offer on, and now I got this shady <laughs> agent coming after me because they want, you know, hey, I had a buyer rep agreement. Maybe they go after their buyer. Well, yeah, it would be. It, by the house, I don't care if they put me on. Yeah, it would, it would be after the buyer. Yeah, I wouldn't. The only thing is you um, and I, I, this is one of the next things I was going to get to. Um, and I mentioned this in my earlier ones. If you if you do have and this is where it gets hairy because you don't know what's in the listing agreement. If you have offered broker to broker compensation in the listing agreement, you are required or obligated to tell the other agent. It can't be like put in your offer and I'll let you know later. If you put your that figure in paragraph five, the way that's written, and this has been confirmed by. And our attorneys and a private attorney, you are obligated. You can't say, put in your offer and we'll see. You've already committed. And you, so you need to tell your sellers that if they choose to do broker to broker compensation and put that number in there, you are obligated to tell the other agent that. Now, if you don't and you choose not to, or you say, I want to give closing costs or put an offer in and we'll decide, then then you have to use different strategies as a buyer's agent to get paid well, we on there. That yeah, but that's... that that. Yeah, that's if you have that. Yeah, but that's not uh, um, enforceable. 
like no one can back can come back and say it's on that website you have to pay me you know so that that's the, it's just uh, and I like the MLS data it's not well, but we're we're well right yes right and and we want we want that on there to show that that we're up front and we're going to pay that and that's going to get your listing sold so the argument on the or the different sides of the listing agreement right now are if you if you do offer broker to broker compensation is that better for a seller to just up front tell all the agents what you're paying to get a better offer or do you say no I'm not offer a buyer broker to broker commission and I'm just going to do it negotiate it through the deal I, I think in this market, I still believe offering the broker to broker is better for the seller, but there's going to be sellers that don't think that. And that's why you're getting, when you call and they say, well, put in an offer and we'll see, or, or put in your offer and ask for what you want in, in your commission. I'm not going to pay you a fee. Right. And then you have the agent that calls and you say, no, my seller's obligated to pay you a fee. Right. And then you your fee, so your buyer and you would have to work that out. Right. And then they put in an offer that your buyer, that your seller can't refuse. And in that offer is to pay the agent. Exactly. Fee. Exactly. And the buyer, the seller says, you know what? In this, in this market, you know, someone's, especially some houses that are sitting, are they really not going to pay you if you put that offer in to not sell their house? So, and yes, we're, we're. Conversation. If you're a listing agent, you have that conversation. Yeah. yeah. We've all turned this into a business. It's, it's always been a business, but it's more important being now a business now. So yep. you can not do that. That's that's your prerogative. But keep in mind that if you're not having those tough conversations with that seller right off the bat, save yourself a lot of headache down the road. I yep. think. Well, let me go through these other ones because they probably can't hear all your conversation, just to well, everyone online. So that's that's what this form is for, the buyer broker agreement. Um, like I said, I'll be sending these. I'm going to give them one once over one more time i'll send them all out in pdfs so you have them um, then here we got the buyer side and as you can see it gets a little more complicated because there's different options that are they doing uh, how they're paying the commission so again i've gone through a lot of this so i'm not going to go through like line by line but this is again a, a good form do you see the different options and the forms you're going to need uh, on there and as always you know you're hearing different things out there from different agents that aren't always true. So just if you hear something that either goes against this or someone's telling you something different, call me, we'll discuss it and make sure um, you are, you know where you need to be on it. So that's the buyer side. And then here we have the listing side that shows the different options. And this is what I was talking about, whether you're offering uh, commission in that 5A or no commission, and then what you need to do on all your documentation all the way down the road. So that gives you, uh, hopefully this is just going to really reinforce um, what I've talked to about earlier uh, on the slides, but this I think will be just be a good reference for you to make sure you're using all the right forms on there. So check those out, shoot any questions. I mean, if you have any questions now, you can certainly you know, have them in chat in the chat. Let me just go make sure someone might already have a question. Let me go back there. Not there. Okay. Okay. All right. So on all of that, any anyone online? I know we've been talking a little bit here. Have any questions on any of those? forms and I know you'll need some time to digest them and everything. I know Carl's looking like, are they all correct? <laughs> but I'll talk to you, Carl, when we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out and make sure we're on the same page with everything. Um, the other thing, I'm gonna switch my screen here and I, I know some of this is redundant, but I think it's important because one of the big things with the compliance of everything here is how you're going to keep all these forms. So I'm going to go over to um, uh, Skyslope and let me just change my screen sharing here. Uh, 
Okay, you should be seeing Sky Slope now. Okay, so again, I know I've gone over this a few times, but in your Sky Slope up here in the upper right hand corner, a little icon, you hit on that. My account, this email is your Sky Slope email address that you can send any an email to and any documents that are attached to that email will automatically go into, let me go back up here, up here, your working documents. So you click on your working documents. You could see I did a couple examples. I threw a, um, a lease draft in there and I, I buy a rep in there just for example. So you're not, because you're not always going to have a full file set up and ready to go. You might have just be showing just like, uh, as a listing agent, you have someone that comes and is not represented. You get that representation agreement signed. Well, what do I do with it now? Do I stick it in a folder? Do that? All you have to do is simply, you can take a picture. You can have a PDF, whatever form you have it in, and then simply email it to that address. It'll pop up here, save forever. Make sure you label it and name it in a way that you can find it. But that way you're not having to hold on to all these files. Because in, in that example, you're not representing that person. So they're, you know, you're going to show many times where they're not going to buy the house. So you're not going to have a whole file set up in Skyslope. Um, so you can always put them here. Certainly you can put them in your listing file also, but this just is an easy way to get them there quickly and know that that document is now saved forever, backed up and ready to go. So that's real important that you, you save these documents. It's one thing to follow the rules. It's another thing to, to verify and have that document, um, at your disposal all the time. So that that's real important. Um, so that would be your personal file? Yes, you, file. you have a working documents file. So that just goes into the hit here. This is just other things that I really just threw in there as so examples. In my schedule, I'll have a list of those. And if I want to come back and rename it, I can come back. And yeah. That yeah, you can move it, you can rename, you can split it, you can okay. move, move it around. Okay. All the, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then you go to a general one, yours, it goes in order, whatever, Carl, it goes to whatever I have in my stack. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So hopefully everyone is good with that. It's real, real simple um, on there. Now, obviously, if it's something that you're, it's part of a file, you want to put it in there or, or transfer it there. But this is just something to make it easy. Yes. And to stay compliant. All right, come on. Um, the other couple things I wanted to just discuss just in general, I mean, as, uh, you've seen interest rates are coming down. So that has helped. I think we're, we're definitely seeing more people list their home now. Uh, people still like to see them selling quicker, but you just have to be diligent about your research on what you're looking for at, as far as comps, as far as your competition, as far as your upgrades in a house. I mean, that's probably two of the, uh, main things and it's you know you have to beat the other houses out now there's st we're still in that phase we don't have enough buyers um to every house to sell anymore so the way you're going to get your house sold is you have to make sure that they have it at the right price based on um, what their condition is and what their upgrades are um, and they have to be reasonable i mean that's the other thing I, i've talked to a few agents where they're they're just not reasonable you know people it, you know, five years ago before COVID, it was great to make ten thousand dollars on the sell your house. Now people want to make one hundred and fifty, and they're mad that they're only making one twenty. Well, you, it's your job to you know make sure that you're being realistic with them and what their time frame is and how they're gonna to get it sold and to go through all those things. So um, I think you're going to see more and more buyers come back to the market. I mean, we should, by all indications, are we're going to have a 25 to 50 point rate cut here on September 18th, which is only seven days away. I don't know that that's going to have an immediately immediate effect on mortgage rates, but it's going to I set a little bit more of a mindset that we're headed in the right direction. Hopefully um, we'll see, maybe we'll get another little dip. Uh, everyone seems to think that like 6% is that magic number. And we're just about, we're really there. can get there pretty easily now for buyers with different programs that are out there. So if you have any questions on that, make sure you hit up your motto guys, Josh and Zach, they can uh, help you with that as far as where we're at and what programs are out there and everything. Um, trying to think what else I got on my list here. 
Any other questions in here, in the room, online? Um, so look for that. I'll be sending these out. Like I said, I'm going to look them over one more time, but by the end of today, I will send out the PDFs. Uh, hopefully that'll be a really good reference. I will, I'm going to start studying the new form changes. So unfortunately, this is probably, I don't think it's going to greatly change. I think my hope for the new form changes that are coming in November, they're going to address some of the issues that we're talking about right now. Like, here's the problem if you know, they don't, if the commission's not in five, here's the issue if they say they're not paying commission. Uh, so I'm hoping that those form changes are gonna make yeah. our lives easier. Y yes, yeah, in November, there's gonna be another update on, on the contract. So um, I'm gonna be getting my hands on those shortly and I'll be up to date, but I think right now we just have to get really comfortable with this. I mean, November is still, uh, well, just two months away, so. Um, I'll have updates on that, but right now you get as comfortable as you can with this. And I think that the market is changing. We needed these interest rates in April, but we'll take them, we'll take them when we can get them and hope that that'll, that'll continue. Um, so that's it for today. Any um, last questions? Let me just check the chat. Nope, nothing in the chat. All right, that'll do it. Um, have a great rest of your week. Um, oh, just real quick, although, She's not on. I did forget to mention the 49ers in Houston in my other, my Monday update. So I had some people upset that I only mentioned the Cowboys and the Steelers. So, <laughs> sorry guys, but uh, every I, everyone did have a pretty good week, at least the, the people I know who are fans here. So Houston fans and uh, 49er fans and everybody did well. So we'll uh, talk to you soon. Take care.